Quicksand has two main characteristics, which are density and viscosity. This is the second part of the quicksand experiment, and it will be about density. The ratio is one cup of cornstarch and a half cup of water. I am using cornstarch to make quicksand because both of them have the same attributes. They will change viscosity depending on the force or pressure that is being put onto them. One more time, viscosity of the fluid is a resistance that the fluid gives to the object when the object is going through it. Density is a relation between mass divided by volume. I will make a little bit more quicksand now. I'll start mixing water now. It's already very hard here. My hands to mix it. As you can see, the quicksand has formed into a solid and the liquid at the same time. As I explained earlier, when you put pressure on it, the atoms and molecules are getting closer to each other, which makes it a solid. But when you let go and stop adding the pressure, the, mole the molecules and atoms are going away from each other. And that means it is a liquid. The viscosity increases when pressure is applied to it, but the viscosity decreases when pressure is not applied to it and it will turn into a liquid. If I put my fingers through gently, it will let me because it is in a liquid form and the viscosity is low. But if I apply a force, molecules and atoms will get closer to, to each other and, it will, and the viscosity will be high, preventing me to go through. Quicksand has two main characteristics, which are density and viscosity. I already explained what viscosity was. Density is a relation between mass divided by volume. Mass is how packed the material of an object is. Volume is how much space it occupies. Example, bricks versus feathers. One ton of bricks will occupy less space than one ton of feathers, since bricks are more packed up, so bricks will have a higher mass, while feathers will have a higher volume. I will add water to this first batch quicksand that got stiffened yesterday, and then I will add it all together. I will perform a test of density to see which objects will float or sink. Quicksand's density is about 2 grams per milliliter. So if an object floats, that means it will have lower density than the quicksand and it will be less than 2 grams per milliliter for its density. But if, it, but if the object sinks, then that means it will have a higher mass than the quicksand and will have and will have a higher density than 2 grams per milliliter. Objects that I will be testing are a plastic button, glass, toys, crayons, clay, wooden blocks, egg, boiled egg, quarter, nickel, penny, dime, a bouncy ball, a candle, a piece of aluminum, metal screws, batteries, and another piece of plastic. We'll test the objects now. Plastic button. Piece of glass. Second piece of glass. Toy. One crayon. Wooden block. Egg. Clay piece, boiled egg, quarter, nickel, penny, and a dime, 
a candle, a bouncy ball, a piece of aluminum, metal screw, battery, and another uh, different kind of plastic. Some of the objects have a little bit more density than the quicksand, but not enough to sink. So I will test them by pushing them down a little bit and giving them a little shake. And if they sink, then they will have a higher density than the quicksand. To summarize, all of the objects that did not sink are the wooden block, the candle, both eggs, and all the toys that were not made out of solid plastic. The button was made out of solid plastic and just needed a little bit more of a push because it had four holes inside of it. All of the objects that did not sink have less density than the quicksand. The question is, can humans sink in quicksand? The answer is, we shouldn't. Because the human body has less density than quicksand. The human body has one gram per milliliter, while quicksand has two grams per milliliter. But why do people sink? Because they struggle to get out, and then eventually they'll sink to a point where they will, when they will die. But later on, the quicksand will bring them back up to the top, like the wa like the water does. But the point is that it's harder to sink and quicks and it's harder to sink in quicksand than in water because cause water has the same density as a human, one gram per milliliter, and quicksand has more density than a human because quicksand has two grams per milliliter while humans have one gram per milliliter. My conclusion is quicksand is both a solid and a liquid depending on the pressure that is being put onto it. Example, when you add pressure to the quicksand, it will be a solid. But when you stop adding pressure, it will turn into a liquid. If I hit the quicksand, it will not splash because atoms and molecules are getting together and the viscosity is getting high and it will prevent me to go through it. It's as strong as a wall and it won't let me go through. But if I go through gently, it will let me because that because the atoms and molecules are not together and it will let me go through. But if I try to go up really fast, it will not let me. But if I go up slowly, it will. As you can see, it looks like a solid and a liquid at the same time. Now I'm going to take a chunk, and you can see how it repopulates. And now I'm going to put a chunk back, and it's going to melt down like ice right away, like ice cream.